Today down in the comments, I want to hear what is your favorite horror read of the last six months or the last year. Something that you read within the calendar year that made you really scared, that made you really enjoy reading. Put it down below in the comments so we can keep a nice recent list. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar, the author of Video Night, the upcoming Clown of the Cornfield, and a bunch of other books that you can go read and pre-order right now. And this is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where I usually uh, review a movie, talk about a movie, and then I recommend a piece of horror fiction or horror literature that you will enjoy reading if you like that movie. But today we're not doing any of that. Today we're doing another one of my uh, top five lists. We're going to talk about five new or newish horror books that you simply have got to read. They're really good. If you want to check out my film reviews and my book pairings, uh, make sure you subscribe uh, and hit the bell icon and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. If you just want to see the videos where I recommend books, usually five at a time, I've made a nice little playlist that you can click up here and watch a ton of book recommendations. Get a huge uh, mark on your library card. You know, just have them calling after you like debt collectors. It's going to be crazy. So I'm shooting this video in April of 2020 and my goal with this video was to keep things recent. Talk about books that are by current authors who are currently working. In a lot of my other videos, I talk about classics, books by authors who've been dead for a bunch of years. In this one, I, my main dictate was uh, keep it in the last 10 years or so. So the first book we, I want to talk about, as I am recording this, came out this week. I'd gotten an early uh, review copy of it, so I've had time to read it. Uh, it is called The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Now, I've talked about Hendrix on the channel before. I've definitely talked about his uh, nonfiction book, Paperbacks from Hell. Uh, wrote along with uh, Will Erickson of Too Much Horror Fiction fame. I love that book and it's great and uh, Hendrix's fiction is really good uh, starting with the books he put out with Quirk uh, Horror Store which is a haunted Ikea thing, My Best Friend's Exorcism, Then We Sold Our Souls, his kind of hard rock metal story and with each of those books I've kind of had the feeling what, which each one I'm like oh I like this one the best, oh I like this one the best. They kept getting better and better and better uh, to the point where I think uh, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires uh, is, 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 is the best yet. I, I, I really was halfway through and thinking, well, I think We Sold Our Souls is going to beat this one out for me. Uh, but this book ends so strong. Uh, it is a story in the vein of Salem's Lot. or It is a very, I don't want to say traditional because that makes it sound boring, but it is a very uh, traditional vampire story, but told in a, such an interesting and compelling way with characters who are not your typical uh, prota horror novel protagonists uh, and they're given such empathy and their relationships seem so fleshed out and it seems so real that it, that it elevates that typical vampire story to something approaching feeling like, wow, this feels like a classic, this feels like a Salem's Lot, this feels like an interview with a vampire, this, this book's riffing on all these different things and all this different vampire lore and almost in a little bit of a meta way because we have a scene where our main character goes out and buys a bunch of horror paperbacks because this is uh, set in the late 90s. It's set in the same town as My Best Friend's Exorcism, so it's kind of a, it's not really a sequel, but it's like a, you know, expanded universe type thing. It's one of those books where the title tells you what it's about. Uh, it is about a uh, Southern housewives uh, who start a book club and there's, you get kind of the dynamics and the tension between them and how they choose their books and what they like reading about and they settle on, they like... They like true crime. They're reading all these true crime books in the, in the beginning. And then this uh, stranger comes to town, and he seems like a bad dude, but all the husbands of the housewives kind of like him and then get economically entangled with him. And it's a little bit of a boy who cried wolf story between our protagonist, Patricia, and the rest of her book club uh, not believing her, and then the men not believing her, and this battle she has with this supernatural energy that has, has come to their town and is going to exploit them and drain them in more ways than one uh and it's just really really good it, it that that synopsis does not do it justice because it does sound like such a kind of straightforward uh novel but the the complexities lie in these characters and the character relationships and the way that they finally plan to take down this uh this guy and it's 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 incredibly satisfying uh one of the better endings to a novel i can think of actually and it's just really, really, really good. I read this one recently, so it's fresh in my mind. Next book I want to talk about, and this is the oldest book on the list. It's nearly 15 years old, so I gave myself a little wiggle room in the what it, what qualifies as new. Uh, but this is The Good House by Tananair of Dew. I talked about this in one of my other videos, but it was 
you know, not a lot of people saw that video and not a lot of people stayed to the end, but I, so I wanted to talk about it again because it's such a, uh, I read it this year and this book really blew me away. A lot of times on the channel, I do not recommend uh, kind of doorstop novels. I do not recommend uh, super uh, long books because I know the way I feel towards them. If I'm not 100% in, in the first 100 pages, I look at the rest of the book and I go, oh God, uh, this is a book that I almost guarantee justifies its length. The title makes you think it's a haunted house thing, but it's not. It is uh, a Pacific Northwest uh, voodoo story with about a family that has this intergenerational curse and the, the one person in the family that's gonna kind of try to stand up and stop it. Uh, she has a, a terrible tragedy happen to her in the very beginning of the book where she moves back into this family house and her son kills himself. And then you back up and you have these alternating uh, chapters going to the future and going into the past where you're, uh, you have the mother and son kind of dual narrative and they're figuring things out together. And the way that it wraps up and the way that it, without spoilers, the way that it wraps up is so satisfying and so without undoing everything that came before it uh, really gives you such a good sense of like, wow, that didn't go where I expected or that didn't end the way I expected and I like that. Uh, it, it probably won't work for every single person out there, but it really worked for me and uh, the, the, the journey itself, the villains are really good, it's real scumbag villains uh, and it's just really, really uh, a nice page turner, long read that you can really settle into and, and feel good. Uh, knowing that it's gonna go somewhere that you like. Uh, it's great, uh, The Good House by Tenet Arifu. The next book I wanna talk about, another one that's very recent, just came out very recently. They're not all, all gonna be this recent. Don't think I'm like this incredibly, uh, have only read books from this month, uh, <laughs> uh, prolific reader. I'm not, I just happen to have read these in early releases and they're just two fantastic books from this year. Uh, but this one's called The Return. It's by Rachel Harrison. This is a, a, an author that is not familiar to me. Uh, I think this is her first book or first uh, big big publisher debut. The very simple premise is uh, we are in the head of this of our of our narrator Elise, and she's really struggling uh, post college grad school, and her friends are all doing really well. She has this this tight knit group of uh, four girls that she went to college with, and they're all now spread across the country and all doing different things. And one day, their friend uh, Julie goes missing. Like, no trace, she was in a national park on a hike, gone, nowhere, the, the friends, the other friends in this kind of friend circle start giving up hope. They start thinking like, oh, she's gone. Our narrator is denying that she's gone. Months and months pass. Uh, the, uh, Julie's husband that they don't really know because he wasn't in their friend group has like a funeral for her, they all go. And then two years later, poof, she returns, it's the return. So she's back and it's national news because where the hell did this girl go? She doesn't seem to want the spotlight, she's back. She can't remember anything or claims she, that she can't remember anything from what happened to her for those two years. And she just kind of wants to be business as usual. And these friends, they're, even though they're all across the country, the leader of the bunch, who's, who's one of the most successful, kind of the richest, um, says we all have to go on this girls weekend or girls week uh, retreat we have to go up to upstate New York and stay at this hotel I know about it's really posh it's really cool and the hotel becomes this this kind of extra subplot they go and they realize that this is their first time seeing Julie they realize that Julie is not the same not only does she not 100% look the same she looks bad uh, she doesn't really remember the friend dynamics doesn't really isn't really talking the right way about things doesn't remember that she's a vegetarian. Uh, all this different weird stuff, and then the book goes uh, like wild from there. Uh, it's a book that start that's where the horror and the and the creepiness of it uh, is so effective because so much of it seems so real. Uh, Harrison really, really gets uh, an age range that I don't feel like you get in a lot of horror fiction. Late twenties, early thirties. Don't know what you're doing with your life. Uh, still holding on to those uh, those friendships, those very strong friendships you formed uh, in college, at school. Uh, different levels of success, different levels of like, I like this friend more than the other friend. I'm worried that my friends like my other friends more than me. It's really, really keenly observed, and there's a lot of a lot of the stories told just through dialogue and phone calls. It's like a lot of that. Very, very, very 
good and astute and surprisingly uh, funny in some ways and then in some ways not funny at all. Really, really like this book. Next book I want to talk about is Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones, and this is about as different as you can get from the uh, other books we've talked about so far. Uh, this is like quasi-YA, kind of like a young adult novel. Jones is one of my favorite writers. Uh, I've talked about this book on the channel before, but it was years ago. Uh, even though It came out in 2016, uh, but I wanted a reason to talk about his new one, uh, The Only Good Indians, which uh, I'm most of the way through. It's fantastic. It's coming out in July, I believe, uh, but that's really good, and you should pre-order that. But since you can't get that right now, I want to talk about Mongrels, which is kind of coming-of-age, uh, Peaker-esque novel where we're, we're, we're skipping around. Some of the chapters feel like short stories because I think they were written as short stories about a family of werewolves. And the way that werewolfism, uh, lycanthropy, is discussed in this novel and the way that it uh, manifests is different than any other werewolf book I've ever read. I like werewolf books. I like, you know, you know Whitley Strieber's uh, Wolfen and... And, and, and the, the Gary Brandner's Howling, the book, the Howling books, and I like werewolf films a lot. There's nothing quite like Mongrels. Even though there's like a werewolf in every chapter, it doesn't really even feel like a horror book. It's so its own genre and so funny and kind of uh, more a book about uh, being poor and being other uh, than it is about anything else and the, the kind of Lycanthropy kind of stands in for that, but you get these great uh, werewolf scenes. You get like transformation scenes, like on a par with the American Werewolf in London transformation in the way that they're rendered and the way that they're talked about and the novelty of them and how different they are. It's very, very cool. There's a lot of kind of stand up and cheer moments when you get some real werewolf action. Uh, it's really, really good. I, I, it's a book I think about often, even though I read it years ago. Uh, I kind of always come back to, like, oh yeah, remember that part in Mongrels? It's great. All the other books on this list are novels, but this one is not. I wanted to add a short story collection, a single author collection, because I enjoy them immensely, and I, uh, I've talked about them in my other videos, and uh, how a good uh, short story collection feels like a novel. Uh, and uh, Paul Tremblay is an author that a lot of people talk about, a lot of people have read uh, his books, uh, Cabin at the End of the World, which is the most recent one, A Head Full of Ghosts, which is like, gonna be a movie, Disappearance of Devil's Rock, which is really, I think, one of his, his underrated novels, really, really great, really creepy, really sad. Uh, and then Growing Things, which I don't see as many people talking about, maybe because it is a collection. This is a collection where I do think it fits into the category of like great collections because it does feel novelistic and it does feel like you're reading the same author, but it brings that to about its breaking point because there are stories that are here that are really scary and really uncanny and weird with a capital W, like really great modern weird fiction. And then there are stories in here uh, that are gonna probably try your patience, uh, especially if you haven't read Tremblay before, uh, because there's, uh, there's like these weird, absurdist, funny, meta stories that you're like, what the hell? Uh, and then you'll you'll turn the page on one of those and consider like I don't know how I'm feeling about this and then he'll he'll hit you with another crazy uh, high concept weirdness. Uh, it's a, it's a really great book and it, it it's I recommend it on its own if you haven't read Tremblay before. I think you can read this first, but if you've read his other novels, uh, it certainly helps uh, some of the stuff in here. Uh, there's just to give you an example, one of my favorite ones is about a, a botched robbery, and it's like that kind of classic scene where all the guys are in the getaway car, and then it has this Twilight Zone twist where where they just start disappearing. Like they're not necessarily dying; they're just disappearing. It's this. It's a great haunting short story. And then there's another one. I think it's called. It's not the Ice Climbers. I think it's called the Ice Tower. These researchers are not researchers; they're just climbers are in uh, Antarctica, there's this giant tower, like giant icicle that has formed, and scientists don't know how it's formed, but like <laughs> Red Bull sponsors climbers to go climb it and, and research it, and the terrible stuff that happens to them. It's kind of like the thing meets the Mountains of Madness, uh, meets something like Lear Baron would write, uh, but it's a really great story. And then you have this weird novella-length, novelette-length um, exchange between what's supposed to be 
Paul Tremblay himself and his dog walkers and the, the little notes they're leaving for him as part of this dog walker service. And it starts absurdist and funny and then goes really weird literary critique uh, direction. I love this. I think it's great. Uh, out of the books on the list, it's probably the one that has the most asterisks of like your mileage will vary because you want to like know that you're going to hang with this and know that you're going to uh, enjoy the weirdness of this. But there's some stuff in here that's undeniable. It's bulletproof. And some other stuff that takes such big, weird swings. Uh, it's amazing. I'll put the links to everything we've talked about down in the description so you can go check them out. Uh, Amazon, and also so please support your local bookstores during this time, during this weirdo time that we're living in. If you've read my other books, if you've read Video Night, The Summer Job, Exponential, uh, First One You Expect, Tribesman, if you've read any of those, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for telling your friends about them. Thanks for reviewing them on Goodreads and Amazon and sharing the links out and telling other people they have to check them out. I really, really appreciate it. Whether you've read a paperback, an ebook, or an audiobook, if you like that kind of stuff, putting those putting these words in your ears. Before you leave, if you like any of those other things, if you like uh, Midwestern slashers, if you like clowns, and if you like cornfields, my new novel, Clown of the Cornfield, is gonna be out uh, in, in August. By the time you're watching this, hey, it may already be out. Please go pre-order it. Please go order it. It's gonna be a beautiful hardcover. This is a soft cover. This is the advanced review copy, uh, but you can see that incredible art by uh, Matt Ryan Tobin, who does Mondo posters. Harper Teen's putting this out. Clive Barker called me an author who knows how to make us afraid, which that's incredibly, incredibly humbling and cool. Uh, check out this book. I'm really proud of it. I think you'll like it. If you like any of the books on this list, if you like any of the books we've talked about on this channel, give it a shot. What do you got to lose? Go pre-order. That's it for us today. Like, follow, subscribe, uh, Twitter, Instagram. I'm, I'll put them all the links down in the description. Uh, watch my other videos. Thanks so much. Have a great day.